going to do now is talk a little bit about a potential currency war between the US dollar and the Chinese currency, the RMB. And to do that, we have a great lineup. Look at all these great guys, a great lineup of guests from far and wide. And I'll just introduce you to each of them, tell you who we're going to be chatting to over the next few minutes. First next to me is Mark Chandler. He is the global head of currency strategy at Brown Brothers Harriman. Also with us, Neil Livingston. He's the global head of transaction services origination at RBS International Banking at Sushi. Takeuchi, head of Center for Monetary Corporation in Asia at the Bank of Japan. Trevor Williams is also with us. He's the chief economist for wholesale banking and marketing at Lloyd's Banking Group. And I used to interview Trevor many years ago, uh, every week practically, on both CNBC and Bloomberg, and he looks exactly the same. So Trevor Williams, nice to have you with us. And Ying Chao Geng is the Director of Research at the Fung Global Institute. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me this morning. Everybody now is, I mean, we heard that de uh, debate with uh, Larry Hathaway, the chief economist at UBS. I don't know if you all had a chance to hear that a couple of days ago, but he was saying, look, you know, every time I have uh, a conference at UBS, I ask all these leading bankers from around the world, will the dollar actually prevail as the currency of choice in the international monetary system? And he says, so far, about 40% of people, it always comes up, yes, the dollar will stay. Is the dollar here to stay? Will it continue to prevail? I think so. I think that at least in the foreseeable future, I think for one basic reason, there's not a compelling alternative. The kind of uh, uh, policy needed to have a, uh, the Chinese currency be a rival with the dollar on the, uh, not only as a reserve asset, but an invoicing currency and as a, uh, as a transactional vehicle, I think is, is not there. And it's not just inertia, but the depth of the market and the transparency are also important. Hi. There's absolutely no question RMB is on the rise, but in the medium term, we do not see a structural change in terms of the dollar being the dominant world currency. As long as 60% plus of world reserves are held in dollars, 90 plus percent of Asian trade is denominated in dollars, most commodities are traded in dollars. We don't see any structural change. Let's just in the clarify short what you mean by the medium term. In business school, they always told us that was three to five years. Is that what you mean? After five years, the dollar could get a run for its money? After five years. After five years. I think expectation, expectation uh, for Chinese renminbi to become a dominant key currency is coming from the expectation that China continues to grow, and it's already a big power. But if you look, up, look back the history of, say, US dollar becoming the, the key currency, uh, it was 1872 when uh, uh, the, the GDP of the United States uh, surpassed that of the, the United Kingdom. But it took about uh, 50 years uh, since then uh, until it became a uh, currency, key currency. Mm -hmm. So uh, much more important is not only the size of the economy, but also the, the financial market, uh, which uh, intermediates uh, the global uh, 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 financial flows. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, I would absolutely agree with that. I think that not only does China have to surpass the US in terms of its share of global GDP, which it hasn't done, and I don't think it will do it for at least another de decade, but it will then have to have an internationalized uh, global economy which allows free movement of, uh, of capital as well as uh, goods and services, and that's a long way off. So I think um, it'll be many years before China's currency will surpass that of the US. So they've all been talking about your currency. What do you have to say to them? Well, I, yes, I think look, if you look at the real economy, yes, everybody expecting RMB will be more important, but look at the financial sector, there's a huge gap for China to catch up and also the institutions you know, behind the economy uh, is still very, very weak. And um, how can you predict uh, in you know, next six months or next one year, you know, how the Chinese political systems will be? That, that's a question mark, and that will affect uh, uh, the future of the RMB. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's uh, broaden that out a little bit and talk about uh, this journey that you've had for the internationalization of the Chinese currency. I mean, it's been going on for some time, but in 2010, re things really started to happen. How do you see that moving? What are the next few stages that you see coming up for the Chinese currency? Well, I think uh, uh, with the volume of trade, uh, there is a necessity for RMB uh, to be normalized, just like uh, you know, yen and uh, euro, you, know, you have to use it. So China still uh, is in that stage, and I think that process will go very fast. Mm -hmm. But it's very different from uh, becoming a reserve currency, uh, because that requires really uh, predictable political so, uh, economic institutions. 
So I think that's really only uh, uh, the issue of the internationalization of Namibia, I think, is greatly exaggerated. Uh, the, yes, the, uh, the PBOC has uh, lines that are swap lines, but none of them have been used. Uh, there's a, a small number of banks, a small number of countries that have adopted the Namibia as a reserve asset. I think. Uh, Bank of, Ch uh, Bank of Japan has maybe have gotten permission to buy some on Nigeria. We're talking about a very small level, and even when it comes to trade for China, when, it, when the trade is invoiced in Renimbi, it's primarily the imports, mm -hmm. not the exports. So it's still very, it's still a very, a very early on in what could be a long-term game. I mean, absolutely, it's a long-term game. I think typically uh, currencies develop when the country begins to internationalize its economy, and the companies that go abroad need to secure the supplies in their local currency and then the influence that they have in the countries that they're operating in might want to then use that currency as well because it will ease the transactions with that company. So uh, in the case of China in Africa, for example, in some cases they'd want to use the renminbi as a, as a means of uh, intermediating um, the uh, transactions that are taking place. But that takes many, many years. And as was <coughs> said uh, by my colleague to the left, uh, the fact is that it will take many years of an open institutional setup, which China does not have, which it's a long way from having, before there's any chance of the renminbi becoming an international reserve currency. So no, no disagreement with my panel colleagues here, but l l let's be open. The reason we're really having this debate is we've been through a massive financial crisis. We're now in a period of economic fragmentation and, and potential stagnation, mm -hmm. and the world economy is flooded with excess liquidity, US dollar liquidity. Mm -hmm. So that is what is putting so much pressure on the world's monetary system. Mm -hmm. And this is why that this term currency war, mm -hmm. I think it was the Brazilian finance minister who, who made the comment, this highly emotive, highly evocative comment, mm -hmm. was made, and that's why we're having this debate. Mm -hmm. But the, the gentlemen are absolutely right. Structurally and longer term, you have to differentiate between commercial flows, trade business, the in broader investment uh, structures, long-term infrastructure and so forth, and then actually running a global economy based on a currency. Those are very, very different propositions. I wonder how much the, uh, this global liquidity problem, I wonder how much of it is really a problem for the world. I mean, the U.S. is a big, uh, a big trade deficit, which means we're a net importer of capital. So it's not capital leaving the United States going to the emerging markets. And what's really the issue is many of these countries, uh, not only the uh, emerging markets, but even some developed countries, won't allow this adjustment process Process by which the weakness of the economy is hit by the crisis, as you mentioned, uh, these other countries are not letting their currencies appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the war, the so-called war, is really, a, is really a question of this global adjustment process. That's because America exports inflation all over the world, though. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, for Chinese authority, they have a good reasons to go step by step uh, to internationalize uh, their currencies. Uh, I think uh, uh, offshore RMB market is, uh, uh, is a good uh, uh, pilot uh, uh, project for them, which is also uh, coordinated with the Hong Kong monetary authorities. Um, so the reason why they have uh, they are trying to uh, open up uh, this uh, uh, the uh, uh, access to the, through this Hong Kong uh, is uh, they want to really promote uh, the transactions denominated in RMB, especially for trade finances. Uh, um, because uh, they see actually the cost of uh, using the U.S. dollars in many ways. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, really after the crisis, uh, dollar funding got so expensive that the access for the, uh, the Asian banks uh, were restricted. So, uh, and also uh, uh, other reasons, uh, you see, if you are dependent upon the U.S. systems, uh, then I think the Chinese may feel a bit uncomfortable, you see, having seen what's going on, say, in Iran and so on. Do you want to come back? Uh, yes, uh, I think that the Chinese want to uh, really the, the currency to serve the real sector, you know, the trade, you know, the economy, instead of, uh, you know, the financial speculations. So there's a tremendous concern about uh, uh, using the U.S. dollar because that's uh, somehow, you know, the, you have zero interest rate, uh, and that's very different from the reality in China with very... Uh, you know, rapid urbanization, you know, industrialization, very high return on investment. So there's a lot of contradictions there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, using uh, basically U.S. dollar as the trade currency. So that, that concern, I think, leads to the, the leadership to want to actually use RMB as trade. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's uh, two aspects of this we shouldn't get away from. One is that the U.S. Uh, economy remains the world's most dynamic country. And recent events, for example, the um, new technology of access to energy, fracking, which uh, unlocks uh, 
uh, gas and analog to oil means that I think that uh, they probably start exporting uh, net energy over the next few years, which will also support the dollar. And secondly, of course, the other thing is that the productivity gains that they've been seeing recently will also help to support the US uh, uh, economy. So I think actually they're on the cusp of a bit of a rebound. But the other underlying backdrop to all of this is the fact that if you want a world where you have free movement of capital, which you need in order for investment flows and supply chains and the, the productivity that you need to drive global growth, then you need open capital markets as well. Um, and, and that does support the, the dollar for the time being because there's no alternative. Mm -hmm. And the speculative aspect of it, well, I'm afraid that's just part of what free movement of capital means. Markets will look for where there are opportunities. And they don't look if there are no opportunities there. So you have to take that on board when thinking through how these currency flows have to take place globally. How much does this conversation change that we've been having if we've got Obama or Romney in the White House? How much does this conversation change? I think that on a macroeconomic basis, especially from an international point of view, I'm not sure that there's much of a difference from a, a dollar policy. I think that uh, you'd see that uh, before Obama got elected in 2008, uh, him and his uh, team also uh, questioned about the uh, Bush administration, whether they're hard enough on China, mentioned about manipulating of c currencies. And I think that uh, in the U.S., we'd, uh, among politicians everywhere perhaps, a difference between declaratory policy, what they say, and operational policy, what they really do. I think the, uh, the, the policy levers available to whoever wins the White House are quite limited. Uh, and, and probably the, the more you know, operative decisions are uh, what happens in terms of macroeconomic uh, change and, and does the world economy revive and come back to some sort of growth, uh, growth trajectory. Uh, that to me is far more fundamental than, than who is guiding uh, the short-term political agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, in any case, uh, the US and China have to develop a constructive relationship and one thing which is uh, very much overlooked is actually in real effective terms, uh, LMB has been appreciating. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, and also it's not very clear whether uh, the exchange rate itself can heal all the problems uh, among between the two countries in terms of trade deficits and surplus. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think that with, rep with regards to the election, I don't think it makes a difference externally. I think that the final debate between the two candidates showed remarkable unanimity about uh, foreign policy. So I don't think that the foreign policy aspects will change at all. I think there's much more uh, uh, difference between the candidates in terms of their social uh, and versus uh, conservative type domestic policies. But uh, externally, very little different. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that will mean anything for the currency. Yeah, I, I think it's more um, the, the debate in, in the election is more rhetoric. Mm. Uh, in a real uh, sense, uh, the, the, the two countries, US and China, has tremendous uh, you know, uh, mutual benefits and a tremendous stake you know, in, in trade relations. And actually it's very, very solid and growing very, very fast. Mm. And usually never mentioned in the, in the <laughs> election debate. <laughs> okay, well we'll leave it right there. Thanks so much to all of you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your time here.